Hi, hello and welcome back to Made with Made Simple. They are the winners of this week's Made with Made Simple quiz. The links of their profile are given in the description of this video. Go check it out. Follow my Facebook and Instagram page for more medical quiz and to get shout out like these people. This is about the medical meme contest which I am conducting. The last day to submit your meme is August 30th. Uh, the details are provided in the description of this video. Check it out. So, I've been doing a lecture series on uh, nephrology and this video is a part of it and we're going to see about membranous nephropathy in this video. Now, let's begin. Membranous nephropathy is a condition which manifests as nephrotic syndrome. So, you need to know the basics of nephrotic syndrome. If you uh, haven't watched this video which I made earlier, uh, please go check out the description again. So, in the description box I provided the link of this nephrotic syndrome video. So watch it first and then come back to this so that you'll be able to grasp the things easily. So this is how um, the microscopic picture uh, of membranous nephropathy looks like. So after we complete this video you should be able to um, explain this and identify this slide as membranous nephropathy. Membranous nephropathy, now wait don't get confused with this definition first I'm gonna tell you the definition and then we're gonna do this video and finally you'll be able to understand this and it's gonna be so simple okay now let's start membranous nephropathy is diffuse thickening of glomerular capillary walls uh, which is caused due to deposition of immune complexes along the sub epithelial side of the basement membrane so as you can see here what happens here is the glomerular capillary walls as you all know is formed by three main things the visceral epithelium or the podocytes, the glomerular basement membrane and the capillary endothelium, right? So what happens is, here there is diffuse thickening of the glomerular capillary walls and the thickening is caused due to deposition of immune complexes, okay? And they are deposited where? They are deposited just below the epithelium, so they are sub-epithelial deposits, okay? So in this representation, you can see that, okay, first let's let me tell you what these individual things really mean. First, the thing which is present outside, uh, which is blue in color, are visceral epithelium, which are also known as podocytes. And the layer which is present next to it, which is uh, kind of orange, is the glomerular basement membrane. And the layer which is uh, marked as EN here, in the left side of the picture, as you can see here, uh, is the capillary endothelium. So where you need to see here is, this thing which is marked as number one here so you can see here that there are some black deposits which are present below the visceral epithelium so they are sub epithelial deposits and this is what is going to happen in membranous nephropathy there you go the first line of the definition uh, gets solved here the sub epithelial deposits uh, which are present in membranous nephropathy Membranous nephropathy can be uh, primary membranous nephropathy or secondary membranous nephropathy. When there is no clear known cause for membranous nephropathy, it is uh, told as primary membranous nephropathy. And when there are uh, some causes which led to membranous nephropathy, um, they are told as secondary membranous nephropathy. Now first, let's see about primary membranous nephropathy. As I told you, when uh, there is no clear cause for membranous nephropathy in a patient, they'll be classified as primary membranous nephropathy and it's idiopathic, which means the cause is not clearly known. There may be autoimmune association uh, in primary membranous nephropathy, that's what scientists suspect and uh, they've been uh, suspecting that the HLA alleles may be linked to uh, developing primary membranous nephropathy. So I'm not uh, complicating it, you just need to know that um, in primary membranous nephropathy there may be uh, an autoimmune basis and the HLA alleles may be linked to it. There are many diseases which are being um, thought to be linked with HLA alleles such as some kind of psoriasis, uh, even diabetes mellitus have been thought to be linked with HLA alleles and uh, if you want to make a further study into these kind of things, uh, such as the alleles and all, it, it'll be better if you're gonna use Robin's textbook of pathology, which will be telling you um, in detail about these HLA alleles and all that. 
So now secondary membrane of property is that which occurs following something else. For example, a patient who takes drugs such as penicillin, captopril, and NSAIDs for a chronic period may develop membranous nephropathy and that's secondary to drugs so it is secondary membranous nephropathy and in few patients with malignant tumors such as lung or colon cancer they are also more prone to develop membranous nephropathy in SLE uh, there is increased risk of developing membranous nephropathy and in chronic infections such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C and syphilis there is also increased risk of developing membranous nephropathy so let's see the pathogenesis of membranous nephropathy. As I told you in the definition part, there is basically a deposition of immune complexes in the glomerular basement membrane. Where is it occurring? It's occurring um, below or just beneath the uh, epithelium, which is the visceral epithelium. So there are some epithelial deposits, okay? The pathogenesis is uh, there is chronic immune complex deposition and their sub-epithelial deposits and the as you all know immune complexes are formed between antigens and antibodies right so these antigens can be endogenous or exogenous endogenous means uh, those antigens are self antigens which means the antigens uh, which are normally present in the human beings and the antibodies wrongly sense them as an abnormal antigen so these are endogenous antigens uh, exogenous antigens include the thing which come from outside and immune complexes are formed between them and our, our antibody and uh, this includes um, some infections for example hepatitis B, hepatitis C infections and if uh, they are gonna do something and if it's related to that kind of exogenous agents uh, it's, um, it can also lead to development of membranous nephropathy now let's see the morphology part of membranous nephropathy. If you're going to take a section and you're going to see in a light microscopy using H&E stain, you're going to see uniform uh, diffuse thickening of glomerular capillary walls. So that is due to deposition of immune complexes. In electron microscopy, you're going to see sub-epithelial electron-dense deposits, which are nothing but immune complexes. And you, okay, you can also see the effacement or uh, the destruction of the food processes of the visceral epithelium. When you're going to do uh, fluorescent staining and you're going to see under immunofluorescent microscopy, you can see granular deposits containing immune complexes. So all these are mainly due to immune complexes which are formed and uh, they get deposited under the epithelium. So now this picture which we saw in the beginning of this video, as you can see here in the glomerulus, like around the glomerular capillary walls, there is so much of thickening and it appears so thick, right? So normally it, it is not so thick inside the uh, glomerular, uh, like this is inside the Bowman's cup, right? So you can see here that it is so thick, the wall is so thick, um, of the, uh, in, the walls of the individual glomeruli are so thick and that is due to deposition of the immune complexes. The clinical features are basically uh, membranous nephropathy manifests as nephrotic syndrome. So if you didn't know what nephrotic syndrome is, as, as I told you, uh, a video on nephrotic syndrome is provided in the description of this video. Um, go check it out. And it mainly, mainly manifests as proteinuria, uh, generalized edema, and hyperlipidemia and these patients can also have hematuria which is presence of blood in urine and they can also develop mild hypertension. The treatment for these patients are, uh, is by giving corticosteroids and immunosuppressants. Both of these mainly aim to uh, suppress the immunity of the patient but they are not satisfactory but they may be helpful in a few cases and they are not satisfactory in most of the cases. So what happens if uh, a patient develops membranous nephropathy? If the agent, if the antigen is exogenous, for example, if you're giving an external drug or is, if it is due to an infection, if you're going to treat that uh, cause or remove the offending agent, like stop giving that drug, uh, the patient may improve. But if it is a primary uh, membranous nephropathy, 
the problem lies within the patient so it depends there may be remission occurs uh, remission which may occur in 40 percent of the cases for ex uh, in 40 percent of the cases the disease may cure but uh, progression to advanced forms may occur in most of the patients for example they may develop glomerulosclerosis and some other complications uh, worsening of hypertension and all that that may occur but uh, progressing to very severe stage such as renal failure is very rare. It can occur in only about 10% of the patients. So thank you for watching this video fully. Uh, the lecture series on uh, various causes of nephrotic, nephrotic syndrome will continue. So subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for that. So one, uh, once again, I'm re reminding you of the meme contest. Uh, the details are given in the description of this video. Go check it out. So if you like this video, if you want me to make more videos, please support me by donating me on www.patreon.com slash medwithsmadesimple. So if you like this video, please leave a like, share this video to your friends, and comment your uh, suggestions um, below this video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.